I would be shocked if any of those folks were actually evading taxes at all, because it's impossible the way that this infrastructure runs like, you know, you're getting K ones from Blackstone, what oh, are you totally. gonna do? Totally. Are you gonna change that? Like, totally, you know, like, do you guys even know the pin number of your bank card? I have no idea. So it's like, so complicated. Yeah. Okay, so so my point is, I don't think that if there is if there is cheating of taxes, it's happening at that level. What's happening at that level are much more structural issues like carried interest, which they decided not to touch, or trust in a state law. Trust in a state mistakes. law. Those are those. No, I don't think that this is my point. It's not mistakes. There's nobody with a pencil really filling out a K one <laughs> for Bill Gates, <laughs> dummy. That's my point. <laughs>what this bill did was kill the idea of a carbon tax. I think it makes it completely unimportant and it'll never see the light of day. Why? I think it's because in the absence of what we did in the IRA, there wasn't a clear way of doing exactly what you said, which is letting people figure out what the equivalent trading price would be for burning a pound of coal versus, you know, generating the energy needed to run something off of nuclear. There was no market clearing function for that. And the reason is because you couldn't get an equivalent amount of capacity effectively available online so that they could compete one for one. What we did through this IRA was essentially use money to create so many subsidies, and then to also green light the way that incremental fossil fuel projects would come to market so that now they actually going to be put on a level playing field in the broad open market so that they can compete when that happens i think you will make those trade-offs better yourself and as a result i don't think that there will be a, a necessary offset mechanism that'll be required because this plan will still get us to about 40 percent of the way there of where we want it to be by 2030 which is still a pretty decent leap forward there is no plan that gets us to where we all need to be anyways. And I think that the appetite to go from this plan to where we need to be doesn't really exist. So I think that we're just going to have to kind of grit our teeth, get through the implementation of the IRA and realize that this is the beginning of a probably a hundred plus year project. Nothing's going to get solved by 2050. Maybe you'll see something done by 2100. Probably not. It'll probably be a 2150, 2200 kind of an objective. And in that lens, I think like a whole bunch of business models got turned upside down. So I think carbon markets and carbon trading are not going to be the thing that we thought it was going to be. I think stuff like direct air capture, again, are going to be toy projects off to the side. I don't think totally that those agree. are totally totally are not agree. those are not yeah. going to be credible businesses totally like we thought they were going to be. Instead, the raw tonnage of dollars will do what America was able to do for solar and PV over 2000 to 2022, which is just crush the cost per watt into the pennies so that it can be equivalent to hydro, coal, and nuclear, and put everything on a level playing field, and then allow the market to figure it out. How much do you think it would cost? I don't know, pick your pick the pick the most excruciatingly expensive third party outsourcing firm you could <laughs> okay to build an entire system to basically automatically review every single tax return and throw exceptions and machine learn max. and machine learn what fraud look like or what misrepresentation I, let's say five billion dollars it'd be the most expensive max. it'd be the most developers. expensive piece of software ever written and this is what was so kind of like that was the only part of the bill that made not a less sense to me. I think like, if you put really smart computers on the case, or gave it to deep mind at Google and said, Can yes. you guys build this, this system or with machine learning and AI, you'd be done. Tax and a simpler tax, which I guess this is trying to do. But sure. you know, Freeberg, when I looked at this, and you sent it, my initial reaction was, you know, this uh, old adage, it'll be impossible the for these guys to find 87,000 humans that want to work at the IRS. Number oh, one, yeah. look, a couple things. I, I think it's really dramatic to kind of paint it in these stark kind of like bipolar terms. I think yeah. we are post all of that. So I, I understand how in the Cold War, it was easy to fall into binary definitions of good and evil one and zero us versus them team A versus team B. 
But in 2022, I don't think that's how things work anymore. We're in a highly interconnected, highly global world. It's very complicated. Uh, dollar flows are real time. They're massive. Cooperation is real time. It's all over the world. It's with every country. So it allows every country actually the first chance that they've ever really had to maximize their own potential for their own citizens. And that's really what every country's goal is. Right. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. in that lens, look what just happened today. Gazprom said they're going to shut off Nord Stream 1 just for, a you know, a few days, right? But as a result of that, EU nat gas has just gone absolutely nuclear and just closed at all time Four, 14 highs. 14x, 14x where it was pandemic, right? Uh, you know, price so, per unit for year ahead. So if, you, if you, so if you take a step back, we are at max energy production with all of the capacity all around the world, 100 plus odd million barrels a day. Okay, global productivity absorbs that. There is very little room right now to expand that without pushing the date in which that capacity is available out until, you know, 2028 to 2030. So effectively a decade from now. So if you're in this situation and you're a country with vast natural resources, of which I'll just remind us America is one. I think the most important thing you can do for your own citizens is to monetize these petrochemicals now. Get it out of the ground in a reasonable way. Sell them in the marketplace because there's demand for it. Take that money and reinvest it in your people. And I think if you look at it that way, the best run countries are responding to this moment in time like any company would. How do you maximize demand and sell the product you have to the most number of customers globally? And so I think the Middle East is doing an incredible job. The US, by the way, by passing the IRA, finally, I think, is on the right footing because we can talk about this in a moment, but the path to permitting and the path to clean up. And by the way, it puts fossil fuels on a level playing field with, with clean energy alternatives. Emerging alternatives, yeah. The best thing that could have happened, okay? So I think we're all behaving in a very rational, market-focused way. I have a couple thoughts. The first is that WeWork um, is a really interesting business, but that business had been built many times before, and it's called the REIT. And I think what Adam was able to arbitrage was a period of time where he pitched a non-real estate investor, a technology company that was really just a real estate investment trust. And that's why he was able to get these incredibly heady valuations. I think the peak valuation of WeWork was like 45 or $50 billion. Mm -hmm. But what happened, which is that when WeWork ultimately went public, the collective intelligence of the public markets imposed a REIT-based valuation model on WeWork, and it is now a $3.6 billion public company. And I don't think you can dunk on Adam for that. It's hard to build any kind of company let alone a $3.6 billion company, and he was instrumental in that, so he should get some amount of credit. But the reality was that he was pitching people that didn't want to hear about a business that was a real estate investment trust. They wanted to hear about some technology and all of these other things, but ultimately, when you stripped it away, it was a REIT. Now, you started it again, and from the outside in, not knowing anything, because we don't know anything, what it looks like is the beginnings of another REIT, except focused on residential, mm. right? So when you buy hundreds or thousands of apartments, but again, same pig, different lipstick. The, 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 the issue at hand, though, is that, again, he has found a technology investor to buy a technology story. And again, time will tell whether there is a technology business here. But if it ultimately is an amalgamation of a bunch of apartments with some sort of, you know, interconnected technology that helps enable a better community or what have you. Those kinds of REITs have also been built before and REITs are valued in a very structured way on, on this thing called FFO funds from operations. And you know what the upper bound of valuation is, which is if you go and you know, look in the stock market, the most valuable REIT in the world is a company called Prologis. They have about a billion square feet under management, they're about a $100 billion company. WeWork has about 45 million square feet under management. They're a $3.6 billion company. So if you just interpolate from those two data points, on the residential side, Adam's going to have to buy, you know, if you think an average apartment is 1,500 square feet, he has to buy, you know, 665,000 more apartments. 
in order for that to be pro large scale. You know, I don't know, to invest at a billion dollar valuation or 1.5 or 2 or whatever the number turns out to be makes sense if you think the upper bound is unlimited, but if you think the upper bound is 3 or 4 billion, the only reason to do it, by the way, it still makes sense for end reason to do it. And this is why I think people get tilted. Because now this comes to my second point, which is that what Adam Newman is able to take advantage of is a very obvious, powerful understanding of the venture capital business model that other founders don't, especially the ones that dunk on him. 